My goodness, how how does it? And he was babyface just turned sixty four, and Teddy's about fifty four. Uh, t- yeah, but, um, and he and babyface said in an interview a couple of a year or two ago that when they heard them, um, I want it, that he and LA said, "Man, what is this? That we need to change our sound." And so you start thinking of Teddy being, you know, 20, 21 or 19 or so, changing an entire sound. That that doesn't seem to happen. I don't know who, who's doing it, who, which kid is doing that now. But no, did you look Teddy and see? Was, yeah. He was the architect. Teddy Riley single-handedly was the architect of, he dominated a whole era. Definitely. So as a as as a young up and coming musician producer, stuff, who were you looking at to think, I this is who I want to be like as a producer? Did you was it was it Jimmy and Terry, LA and Babyface, was it Quincy Jones or Mutu? I mean, <laughs> it, it was definitely Teddy Riley and Quincy Jones, hands down. Those those two were those were my that was the the goals for me, you know what I'm saying? Those were the guys that I aspired to be, um, that I looked that I looked up to and I studied. But unfortunately, Namdi, I was able to sit in studios with Teddy many nights. He would allow me to, he was at soundtrack studios or whatever studio he was working at during the time. I was in the rooms and um and even um at his apartment sometime, you know, I would I would go and watch him work and, and, say and Nick's- he would no, oh, there was a not even in St. Nick's after he had moved. Okay, okay, up I think the, uh, up in up a west side, um, okay, on okay. a west side highway because we used to ride our race out cars on the west side highway, <laughs> you know, just doing what kids, crazy kids do. Um, but I had the opportunity of of watching him work, and that is what inspired me to do what I do. When did you first meet him? Oh my God! It had to be in the eighties because Aaron Hall. This is this is another part, right? Aaron Hall, the lead singer, was in a choir that I started with my friend and brother, uh, Bishop Hezekiah Walker. What? Oh, we how? had a gospel choir. Yeah, we had a gospel choir, Hezekiah Walker and Love Fellowship. Aaron Hall, the lead singer, um, of Guy, yeah. was one of the lead singers in the choir. Wow. So Aaron connected me with Teddy. Okay. That's how the whole thing came about. Wow. <laughs> so but, but so did you had had um Groove Me come out by the time you recognized Aaron has already has already made it all? I was there, absolutely. Yes. Oh, you had already met yeah. them before Groove Me came out. No, I, I knew Aaron and Teddy, right? They were working on the record before Groomy came out. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. Did you get to meet Timmy? I, I know Timmy, yes. Timmy Gatlin, yes. Okay, okay. Absolutely. Oh, so when you yes. heard Groomy, what was your f- initial thoughts? I mean, it was crazy. I mean, <laughs> I remember him, I remember Groomy. Like I remember hearing, remember the time for the first time when Teddy did Michael, them drums and that swing. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, this guy is brilliant. And it just shifted the sound of black music. 100% hands down. It shifted yeah. the sound. When I interviewed Timmy Gatlin, I asked him, he said that he was, Teddy called him and says, hey, come to the house that, I, that we, I've just got a sound. And he got to the house and he had all these kids and people in the house and he and Teddy was just playing Groove Me. And he says, come on, write the lyrics. And he just, you know, wrote the lyrics just, you know, within, you know, 10, 15 minutes. But he said the sound was just so funky. It was so hot that he just wrote the lyrics. And it's like to think that you can just create. Um, and, and I don't know if we if we've ever given him justice as about as a kid in your in your room with no money being able yeah. to generate those type of sounds and stuff. Yeah, it's it's I mean, what what Teddy has done um will forever be in you know in the history books. You know, I mean, you, you can't talk about R&B in a whole era and and Teddy not be the poster child 100%. Yeah. So, 
you 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 meet you you meet up with him and and, and stuff. When did, is this? Then you go and work with um, DMC, uh, Run DMC, or was it after before? No, that was before. That was before, um, or around actually around the same time. To be to be honest, Namdi, it's really happened around the same time because after Groove Me um, blew up and Guy blew up. Um, I started getting opportunities because the records on Run DMC was blowing up. And then oh. from there, I was working on Salt and Pepper records and Chub Rock, all the hip hop artists I was working with. Um, and then in one of the sessions, it was a Chub Rock session. I was playing keyboards for Howie T, who's producing uh, this amazing hit Chub Rock uh, did called Treat Him, Treat Him Right. Yeah. I was playing keyboards on that record. Are you kidding Another me? producer, yeah. The saxophone solo mm. on that record, that's me playing, right? Wow. <laughs> right? And there's some keys and stuff. So, you know, there were always other producers sitting in the rooms. There was another producer, Dr. Freeze and Spider-Man, who was yeah. just hanging out. And they invited me to a session um, to participate and play keys because we just worked, started working together. They were writing a song and producing a song called I Want to Sex You Up. Oh, yes, 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 yes. That Color ended up bad. on that Color Me Bad, right. And that ended up on the New Jack City soundtrack. Well, I was in that session playing keyboards. And the manager, Hiram Hicks at the time, um, who was managing Dr. Freeze and Spider-Man, took a liking and an interest to me and gave me an opportunity to create some music and produce something. And that's when I went in the studio and tracked a, and recorded a song called I'm Dreaming that ended up being given to Christopher Williams. Okay. And that song, that song ended up on the New Jack City soundtrack as well. Wow. So when, so at this time I was in Nigeria and, and so I, what I, I, you know, I, when I tell my guests is sometimes when you, when you guys are, things blow up in America, you for, you don't realize that it goes across the world. So Treatum was a massive record in Nigeria. Um, but um, also also that New Jack City uh, soundtrack. Um, mm -hmm. And Chubb Rock was actually a very, he, 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 um, he had a very distinct style of rapping, almost like he was yes. ex reciting an encyclopedia kind of thing. Yes. Yes, Chubb Rock was 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 also a brilliant mind as well. Mm. Really, really, really intelligent. Really, just amazing. Just smart. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for being part of the Half Time Chat community. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, but most importantly, why don't you consider being a member? That's a way of supporting the channel, but also getting a lot of videos ahead of time a lot of behind the scenes stuff and some exclusive content that doesn't get shared. But anyway, thanks for watching and thanks for being part of Halftime Chat.